So, welcome to this F5 video on management accounting techniques, which is a bit of a general term, but it's just encapsulating uh, four uh, main techniques we use. Now, you could also put activity-based costing in here, but we've got a separate video on activity-based costing. So this is looking at uh, four others, which crop up uh, from time to time in F5 exams. We have target costing, which we're going to start with in a moment or two. Uh, we have the idea of throughput accounting. We've then got uh, life cycle costing and envir environmental uh, accounting or management accounting, environmental management accounting. Um, now, they're all in the syllabus, but certainly the most common one today has been throughput accounting. There's been more questions on throughput accounting. Target costing has been there a little bit. Uh, life cycle costing and environmental management accounting haven't uh, been exam questions very much uh, uh, until recently. So in the last year or so, it's started to come through and we're getting uh, questions which are targeting those a little bit more in a general sense of word targeting. So uh, we'll have a look at each of the four and then we'll look at a couple of exam questions and see uh, how they can be applied. So first of all, target costing. So target costing is effectively reversing uh, what we normally do, what one would normally do in cost plus pricing. So in cost plus pricing, we have the expected cost, we then have a margin required, and we add that on, and that is the selling price set. So that is cost plus pricing applied uh, in uh, the normal way. With target costing, we have the same connection, but working the other way. We start with the price that we feel is reasonable in the price. It might be by looking at what customers are prepared to pay. It might be by looking at competition and the price in the marketplace generally. Possibly setting a price a little bit below that to gain market share. Uh, we then take the margin required and knock that off to come up with the target cost. And the difference between these two, the difference between the target cost and the expected cost, if there is a difference, is called the cost gap. And we then uh, look at ways to close that gap. Uh, it might be uh, through designing the process in a different way, having a process of production put together in a different way. It might be the design of the product itself, make it out of different material, source things from other places, and so on. And we target that cost, we aim to achieve that cost uh, over the relatively short term period. So that's the idea. Have a cost gap. If the expected costs are higher than the target costs, we need to reduce that cost gap. And to be honest, a lot of this we would um, suggest is done at the design stage because that's where probably 70% of the costs are actually then fixed. And whether we can get cheaper materials or not to make it uh, is almost irrelevant. 70% of how the product is will then, in many cases, uh, be unchanged after the design stage. So we might then think about a variety of questions. Here's a few examples. What features are required by customers? What features are not required? What features add value? And by value we mean either really useful to customers or esteem. A value is something that customers will then pay extra for, either because it makes it very useful or because it gives some kind of um, added feel to the value of owning it, the esteem value. How complex the production process is going to be, how long it's going to take, the number of different components, or what could they be self-assembled, assembled first and then shipped together, uh, brought together as uh, already complete sub-processes. Uh, whether we need specialised labour or whether we could subcontract it. What level of quality do we want to achieve? How large a batch size? And if we need specialised storage, um, how compact is the product? So it may well be. Suppose, for example, you are making something very simple like footballs. Then we may have to store a lot of footballs. Now, if you simply put them into a bag or a net... Then you've got a round shape, which means stacking them becomes very difficult. The storage space is quite complicated. If, however, you make a right welcome to this video on short-term decision-making in F5, 
uh, which covers quite a lot of different topics, as you can see. So if we look at the material here, we 